Welcome to episode eight. Presidio doesn't drill wells. Or do we? So Anthony talked me into doing this. I, guys, uh, just leave your expectations uh, really low. But uh, I'm going to try to play one of my old songs that I wrote like back in 2004. All right. So we'll see what happens. I, I may forget some stuff, but just bear with me. We'll see what happens. In charge what he decides Lies Without a single So let's talk about drilling. You know, what does drilling mean? What does it mean to our company, our industry? You know, what's changed over the years? I'd say probably the most important kind of revolution in drilling was what even back in the early 2000s. And most people would refer to that as kind of the shale revolution. So what happened was that we found these unconventional shale resources in the U.S. contained massive amounts of hydrocarbons, what we knew, but we figured out ways to unlock them through horizontal drilling and fracture applications. So we spent a lot of money. Um, we spent a lot of time, a lot of effort into to manufacturing these things. And what we'd convinced ourselves as an industry was is that with shales and these resources that everything was considered equal. So the variability and well results that we have seen as an industry were going to be gone. We were going to be able to narrow down exactly what the, all these wells were going to look like. Effectively, the oil and gas business was going to become widget makers. Uh, we were going to be able to manufacture oil and gas just on a widget by widget basis, knowing exactly what we were going to be able to make. Drilling results were more sporadic than we thought. Um, results weren't exactly as we predicted. And so you've heard us speak a lot of times over the last years of a lot of value destruction in the drilling business. Specifically, it's around this resource uh, potential and what we tried to do for all these years. So when we started Presidio, you know, again, being, you know, a different lens, a different ways to look at things, you know, we, we started with this PDP strategy, going in and buying wells, optimizing wells, figuring out technology ways to improve performance of wells, the, our people around the wells, processes around the wells, those kind of things. And so we said, you know, one thing we're not gonna do is we're not gonna go back to the, the past, of this, you know, the sins of the past. We're not gonna go back to drilling wells. We were part of it. It was a value destructive business in our position, in our opinion, and we wanted to be able, under the premise of, of Presidio, to generate returns that were what drilling advertised, um, but didn't have the drilling risk. But now all of a sudden we have all these acres that are perspective um, we're getting a lot of inbound calls from people that are wanting to farm wells out, which means they want to drill wells on the lands and things like that. But we have a lot of acreage that we could go and develop. And so we've shifted somewhat from the idea of, you know, OK, this company's not going to drill to in these commodity prices. Is this company going to drill? Why would we drill? Under what parameters would we drill? And so we sent the technical team out to kind of look, scour over and kind of come back with the best of the best locations that that. that sit on our locations and said, okay, you know, what does it look like? What does our potential look like? And what would we want to do with these, um, these prospects if we were to move forward with something? <laughs> We've entered an interesting time in our business in high commodity price cycles that we sit in right now. All of a sudden, our PDP strategy, while it's still active um, and executable, it's just more difficult to buy properties at these higher prices because people are just wanting higher multiples. So to make the returns that we want to make, it's just become a more difficult business proposition at this point. So when the technical team came back and kind of gave us an analysis of what you know our acreage position looked like and kind of what they would do, the returns are really compelling. And you know, while it sounds silly, you know, as an engineer, I said, okay, you know, we've all been bit by the drilling, you know, bug before. We all know that we spend more than we say we're going to spend, and we always get less than we say we're going to get. So let's run some what we call sensitivity. So let's take AFEs and our costs and let's double them. Um, let's take our reserves that we estimated and let's cut them in half. What do the economics look like? You know, obviously, without doing that, no risk. Uh, drilling, you know, the, the returns are phenomenal in these price environments. Um, said, okay, well, if we risk them and we risk them a lot, how bad are they? Well, the crazy thing is they're still really good because of prices. Um, you know, prices are so high right now that, you know, when these wells come on, they can create so much flush production. The returns, even if you really risk capital reserves, capital and reserves, the returns really still look phenomenal. So 
you know, we're at a point now where we say, okay, is this something that Presidio wants to get into? And what we do know is, is that we don't want to become what we were in the past. And so when I think of what drilling means to Presidio, this isn't running, you know, 10 to 15 drilling rigs on, on our acreage, which, you know, obviously it can handle, but we won't is, you know, maybe a, a one rig program where we come in and say, okay, listen, let's pick our best of our best projects. Let's focus on creating returns. Let's learn from every well and make sure that, you know, we drill a few wells, hopefully the results are what we are and we learn from that and we continue to go. If for some reason, all of a sudden we don't like our results, we stop. We don't keep drilling like what we used to do, we stop. And we really use this like as the base business model of how do we generate returns? How do we create cash? You can create a lot of value right now by drilling because of the price environment we live in. So does Presidio go from a company that said that it wouldn't drill to a company that will drill? Uh, I think we probably will. Everybody in this building, everybody in the field is used to drilling. Drilling's exciting. It is. Um, it's, you know, what we've done in the past is, you know, kind of considered it could be boring. But yeah, you know, I think some drilling in the future for Presidio is probably in the best interest of us right now. I really do. Um, it's the right time for us to do it. This is so sincere. You've worked in companies that drilled wells. You've drilled wells. Yep. Lots. Yep. Lots, lots, horizontals. You drill lots, lots and lots and lots, lots and lots and lots, hundreds. You drill Thousands. lots. You drill yeah. lots. You drill lots. I drill lots. You got some drilling expertise. That's it. With me, you drill lots of wells. Yes, sir. Do you think that right now we are a company that can drill good wells? I think that we're a company that can drill good wells because our existence existence isn't predicated on drilling wells in the sense that we're not in a a, a uh, what would you call it a treadmill just trying to create prospects because we have to drill them and we're hopeful and we're crossing our fingers and we're taking risks, which you have to take risks to do it. We're, we're really kind of trying to take the risk out of it because we're a low risk company with a P2P based sort of profile. So I think we can do it and, be, and succeed because we can be selective in so much as you can be selective when you're drilling wells about, about high grading prospects and not committing capital because you feel like you have to commit capital. We haven't predicated our entire business model on drilling wells. So we can go drill wells just on a smaller scale and never really impact the risk of the business because the underlying business is there, the foundation is there. As I look at it, I'm, I've zeroed out that we have people that are capable of building excellent ones. They've all done it. We have experiences in the building to do it. And I have zero doubt that we have a lot of leasehold and a hydrocarbon stacked basin. And I have zero doubt right now the prices are high. <laughs> All those things seem like good reasons to drill, and they are good reasons to drill. Um, I have concerns that we haven't done it collectively as a company. Um, practical concerns, right? Like I've got concerns that, we, that we're in a constricted uh, supply environment for getting a rig, getting casing at a reasonable price. And then I guess the, the chief concern that I have overall is that I think that any, any, any company that drills in any basin from well one to well 50 is going to dramatically improve. Even the best companies are going to dramatically improve in any basin. So for me, I think that our question as we debate how to harvest value in our acreage is, are we best suited jumping on that learning curve? <laughs> and the question is going to be, how many wells do we want to do? How many wells do we want to drill in order to plateau out on that learning curve yeah. and, and, and start to harvest value in the best way possible versus, you know, utilizing uh, or leveraging the experience of some of our, some of the other operators in the basin that may be interested in farming on our, our leasehold. I see a lot of what Brett sees, honestly, that we have a lot of the pieces in place to, to genuinely extract value from all of this acreage, but it's not just about having those pieces in place, obviously. I don't think there's any downside at all for preparing all of these prospects. I personally am really excited about potentially developing them ourselves, right? Like having the opportunity, kind of a challenge for Presidio to pivot and apply their PDP expertise in a different way. We're really good with the details, right? Like think of how much time all of our personnel spend living in the weeds and digging in those details so that we can improve our margins on every single dollar that's spent. And if you apply that mindset to the acreage that we're sitting on, I think we actually offer something unique relative to what these other operators are doing. I don't think it's really a question of should we drill or should, or should another operator drill? I think we need to find the right opportunity to take advantage of their skill set and our skill set. Like, you know, strategic partnerships in this basin. 
which is why I love that this team is so open to entertaining conversations or receiving offers from multiple different parties, you know, and we take each one and seriously review it. And at the same time, we're also seriously reviewing prospects for our own development to see what fits our skill set. It's a lot of different approaches we're taking, but in doing that, hopefully nothing will fall through the cracks, right? And we can mitigate the risk as much as possible. Obviously, we, we, we'll learn something just watching our peers right now. But the DNC innovation is, you know, it's almost generational. It's every year there's more and more, but we could wait ourselves for five years waiting for it to get it better and better because it always will, right? But I think, I think there is a benefit to waiting a little bit in the sense that the machinery of the DNC sort of universe in the, in the Western or Darko is dried up. And so letting, letting that development mature a little bit so that you have the right vendors and the right players and, you know, uh, there's some stability within that, within that base and that, and that, and that uh, space, DNC. So I think that we have the technical know-how. We have a big, big package, big position, big package, giant package. We have a giant position in the basin that we can exploit, but I think that we, are, we also have that market demand where we can be patient, where it's not going to pass us over. It's not other companies trying yeah. to go lease, lease acres and so competitive every month you have to lease it. We have a huge position. Yeah. We're in a really unique position. We have 750,000 acres in the basin. We don't have to <laughs> embark on the land grab. Now, to Whitney's point, you know, if you were to tell me that we've got a few dozen locations and that's it, and we're going to farm, farm them all out over the next 12 months, and that's how we're going to harvest that, then no, I would, I would say maybe we should not farm those out, and if anything, wait for a while and go harvest those our, our own, on our own later to maximize the value out of those locations. What I'll also say is if that's if that winds up being a limited inventory that's available over 750,000 acres in the Western Antarctica Basin, I'm not sure that we need to be drilling anything anyway. Yeah. I'm not sure that, that, the, that the basin is even good enough to, to, to go participate in at, at that point. If you look at the history of development of the basin, and to Brett's point, you come back from, let's just say, 010 to 016 within our basin, you saw a couple principal reservoirs targeted, Tonkawa, Cleveland, some granite wash, et cetera. And those were developed with these um, single unit or one mile horizontals, let's, let's call them that way. The interesting thing now is, is the evolution of technology, <clears throat> two mile laterals have been drilled for a long time, three mile laterals in some basins, et cetera. But what we can do, uh, and Whitney described this uh, really well earlier that I do like is the analytics and the, the data analysis on really large data sets because on the learning curve that, that Tori's speaking of, he's right. There will be a learning curve and we can also watch what's going on in the basin and measure that learning curve that our competitors, uh, other operators are developing uh, right now. See how they're doing because our two mile laterals are they advantageous or not? Maybe in some circumstances they are, maybe in some circumstances they are not. Whitney and I have gone round and round on this a number of times, and that's great. She has analytics on her side, and I'll just think uh, more ad hoc about things, but that's okay. That, that analysis does need to be done. But also, plug-in perf versus dissolvable plugs, et cetera. There are a number of things that the industry is doing right now in a slightly different way than may have been done in the past that we can learn from. And uh, I think in the near term, that's going to be really good for us. The, the bringing the analytics to bear and watching what's going on. I think what I'm hearing is keep collecting data, you know, keep uh, lines of communication open with the operators that we've, that we've assigned out or farmed out acreage to, and keep putting together an inventory yep. for, uh, for ourselves to harvest our acreage. We have a lot of it. What do you I agree. Agree? I agree. Do you concur? I should have concurred. I concur. Just so long as Brett's not the delay, delay guy, then we'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, that's, that's why we got Bo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Planet on land. Yeah.